Hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Writing in the Time of Corona, day 87, where I thought we would try a completely new form. So we're going to try something called a Kirtle Sonnet. That's C-U-R-T-A-L, Kirtle Sonnet. It um, was invented really by a wonderful British poet called Jared Manley Hopkins. And it's a sh basically a shortened sonnet. So um, the way it works is it has a repeated rhyme. I'll tell you the rhyme scheme first of all, and then maybe you can have a can make more sense. So the first six lines of the poem, which are one verse, the first six lines, the rhyme is A, B, C, A, B, C. The length of the line doesn't matter. Um, although they should be full lines, so it doesn't. I, I'm, I'm suggesting you try for a base of about ten beats per line. So the first six are A B C A B C. The second five lines and going to the end of the poem are D C B D C. Okay, so D C B D C. So what that means is you want to make sure that your C and your B rhyme are quite strong words because you're going to be using them a lot. Whereas your A and your D rhyme, you only use twice. So that's the first thing. The second thing to say is that the last line of the whole thing, which is a C rhyme, the 11th line, is a short line. You should aim for about half the number of syllables in normal line. There's a fantastic poem by Jared Manley Hopkins called Pied Beauty, which is a wonderful example of this. And to give you a sort of steer on this, I'm going to suggest that you deliberately try, you, you choose one from these two pairs. You choose an item from the urban or the rural world. So go decide if you're going to go urban or rural, choose one thing. And then how you made that choice, think about whether you're going to celebrate or criticize. Okay, so you might, for example, choose something from the urban world you're going to criticize. You might choose something from the rural world you're going to celebrate. I think that might help you in terms of finding a subject because otherwise, apart from that, I'm not going to prescribe it. So you have an 11 line sonnet with a break after the sixth line, a very short last line and quite an intricate rhyme scheme. And all I'm going to say to you is paper, pen and good luck. Welcome back to what I think probably will have been quite a challenge. I'm going to tell you how I arrived at this and just read you my um, poem. So I thought I would celebrate and I thought I would celebrate the sea. I know it's not exactly rural, but um, or urban actually. <laughs> and um, I'd read quite a few of these uh, Kirtle sonnets and I decided that their weakness was that one was general. So I'm going to try and be specific. So I anchored mine at a specific place. I even looked at a photograph to try and inspire myself to write it. So my Kirtle sonnet is called Kanya Kumari, which is um, at the southern tip of India. See if you can hear the rhyme as I read it. I will write it for you, but see if you can see the rhyme. I celebrate three mighty seas so wide as they rushed that day to Kanya Kumari shore while thin white fishing boats lined up like darts, sarried women paddled in the lapping tide, looking out to the rosy golden dawn and did not ask for more. Tinny voices from the pagoda temple chants fill our hearts. Here at the tip of India, a bay, an ocean and a sea meet. Deep waters mingle, currents rush together, nothing parts. Man has crossed these waves tirelessly for spices, precious ores. Yet none can tell me where all these seas 
begin or retreat. In every breaking wave, the heart can feel the beat. In water, life starts. So that is my Kirtle sonnet on a place I visited in India and I think it's kept to all the rules. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed writing these. Please do, um, please do post them and um, feel free to like and share the page. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day 88. You take care now.